I often find inspiration by exploring the awards website, where I encounter amazing solutions that push front-end development. Recently, after publishing my first shorts video featuring a mouse follow effect, I revisited some of my bookmarked websites that showcase unique cursor designs and stumbled upon one particular interesting site. Let's strip away the complex WebGL background and focus on the cursor circle. The circle doesn't just follow the mouse, it transforms based on the mouse movement speed and direction, creating an elastic effect. Amazing, right? So let's build this thing. First I'll take a peek into the dev console. Aha, uh -huh, there is a cursor element with multiple child elements. We are interested in those two. The parent, which controls the circle's position, and the child, which scales and rotates based on mouse movement. We need to figure out how fast the mouse is moving to get the scaling right, and which way it's headed to get the right rotation. But back to the console. Do we really need so many elements? They might be there for additional effects, but for simplicity I'll use a single element and assign it a class circle. I'll set its position to fixed, define a reasonable width and height, add a rounded border, offset it to the top left by half of its size, and set pointer events to none. To make our life easier, I'll store the size value in a separate variable. Now, in JavaScript, the first step is to have the circle follow the mouse. And it's actually a piece of cake. Select the circle element and create two variables to track current mouse and circle positions. Update the first one on mouse move event. And then, on each new frame, calculate the difference between mouse and circle positions. Multiply it by a speed factor, add it to the circle's current position, and finally update circle's transform property. Oh, awesome! Though we'll need to apply multiple different transformations to the circle elements, so let's actually keep the value in a string variable for now. And let's talk about the squeeze action. Ideally, we want the circle to scale vertically from 1 to 0.5 and horizontally from 1 to 1.5, depending on the mouse speed, of course. But how do we measure the speed? We have data on the current mouse position in X and Y coordinates. Let's put this information to work. We'll create a variable to track mouse position in the previous frame and then calculate the change in coordinates. After calculation, we immediately update the previous coordinates. And now we can use these delta values to calculate the distance the mouse traveled in one frame using the Pythagorean theorem. This gives us a measure of mouse speed. However, we can sometimes get excessively high numbers, so let's cap the speed at… Hmm, maybe 150? Next task is to convert this velocity into a range between 0 and 0.5. Remember, we want to add or subtract a number between this range. So let's divide the current velocity by our cap value and multiply it by 0.5. And that looks right to me. But we want that scaling to be smooth, right? So let's use the familiar smoothing technique. Set up a variable outside our tick function to keep an eye on the current scale. Then on each frame, we calculate the difference between where we want to be and where we are. Multiply it by our speed factor and update our scale. We will store the scale transformation in a new string variable, stretching the circle vertically with their first parameter and squeezing it with the second parameter. Smooth transition, check. Time to see this bad boy in action. Let's slap all those transformations on our circle element. And… wait, something's off. Ah, the scaling is there, but it's too subtle. Let's amp it up by intensifying the mouse velocity. A little trial and error and multiplying by 4 hits the sweet spot. Now it's scaling like a dream, but still no spin. So let's resolve that. Remember we got mouse's delta coordinates. We're gonna use them to figure out which way the mouse is heading. A bit of trigonometry magic gives us the angle in radians. And since one radian is equivalent to 180 divided by p degrees, then we can get the degrees value by multiplying our radians by that. And actually that's it? We did get an angle. That was easy and unexpected. Let's set up a new string variable for rotation and add it to the final transformation update. And it works! Wonderful! But there is this weird jittery thing happening when the mouse stops. Looks like our circle gets a bit confused with the angle when the mouse slows down. To resolve this, we'll only update the angle when the mouse velocity exceeds a certain threshold. Let's say 20? But we also don't want our circle to just forget where it was pointing on a slow mouse speed, right? So let's set up again a new variable to keep track of the current angle, use it for our transformation, and update its value only after our velocity threshold. Now it feels really nice. And we're actually done. But you know what? It still feels like a visitor to me.